The film is based on a true story. Events unfold in a poor African village in Malawi, in 2001. During the day people are working hard in the fields, at one point one of the men collapses with no signs of life. His frightened brother and son immediately run up to him. Soon there was a funeral according to the local traditions of the people. Everyone is sincerely grieving for John. His son Jeremiah and brother Triwell are very saddened. Now Jeremiah must take care of the family in his father's stead. The winds are raging in the village. A boy William fixes radios while his family sleeps. Later, Triwell takes his radio from the sun and tells him to fix the roof. All day long, the family toils like the rest of the village. The man resents that William still hasn't fixed his radio. Now he misses his favorite programs and is forced to talk to his wife and children in spare time. Later, William washed up, as his mother had told him to do, before entering the house. On his bed he found a new school uniform. The boy was very happy with such a gift. After breakfast, Triwell instructs his son before the first day of school. The boy met his friend Gilbert while a pro-democracy rally was taking place in the settlement. Soon Triwell noticed his wife and daughter, who glanced over at the local school teacher. The principal of the school spoke to the students. After paying a semester's worth of fees, each of them would receive a library card. This will give them a chance to go to university and get out in the world. It started raining, and the students scattered to their classrooms. Mike Kachigunda is the class teacher of William's class. Meanwhile, Annie is on the lookout for a job, but there are no openings in the village. After class, William handed the teacher a letter from Annie. Mr. Kachigunda reminded the boy that his father had only paid part of the tuition. The full amount had to be paid, or William would not be allowed to take the class. The boy was very upset, but the friend distracted him. At home, despite the rainy weather, the family continued to work in the field. William did his homework until late at night. The thunderstorm made it very dark, but the family had no money even for kerosene for the lamp. The next day Mr. Kachigunda announced the results of the test. William scored only 62 points. After school, he and Gilbert went to the junkyard hoping to find something useful. William found an old pump. At the meeting, Chief Wim, Gilbert's father, announced to the villagers that the tobacco company had offered 2,000 in cash each for a ton of timber. That's not bad money by local standards. The chief also talked about the flooding in Malawi. Residents do not have the means to build protective structures. The only thing they could rely on were trees. Jeremiah disagreed with the chief however. He needed money, so he decided to sign an agreement with the county and give the tobacco company a forest. Many people supported Jeremiah in spite of the chief's will. Triwell, Jeremiah's uncle, asks him to give up this venture, but the man won't listen. All the people of the settlement live in poverty, and this may be the only chance to make money. In his free time, William pursues his hobby. When he heard the sounds of machinery at work, the boy watched his uncle and other workers cutting woods. William and Gilbert joined in the gatherings of the local youth. Not all of the guys were happy to see the children in their company. At one point their only radio broke down. The boy sneaked the necessary parts out of the house and told his father that the rest of the tuition was due tomorrow. The father replied that there was no money now, it would have to wait until after the harvest. William fixed the radio, thus winning the guy's respect. On the way home, the boys saw William's sister kissing Mr. Kachigunda. William asked Gilbert not to tell anyone about it. The next day Gilbert told his friend to inform the parents. Kachigunda had no right to date one of his students. In addition, the boy became suspicious that it was the teacher who had helped Annie get the certificate. While William was trying to fix the battery, Gilbert suggested that he break Kachigunda's bicycle to teach him a lesson. The boy would not do it, but he was interested in how the lantern on the bicycle worked. At night, Triwell counted the remaining money. Agnes believed that their son had to go to school by all means, or he would not have a good future. But the husband replied that they couldn't afford it now. It rained all day. The school principal gave the names of the students whose parents had paid the tuition. The others would have to leave until they could find the money. Triwell was working in the field in the rain and tied up in the mud. Realizing the hopelessness of the situation, he decided with his son to visit Daniel, an old acquaintance. Perhaps he could help. Daniel works for the tobacco company. Triwell explained the situation to him, saying that he wanted to use his savings to buy trees on one of the properties to save them from being cut down. However, Daniel said the company would not agree to this. 
Daniel understands why the late brother did not leave Triwella's land as an inheritance. Because of his gentle nature, he would have lost everything. Now because of his soft-heartedness, his whole family suffers from poverty. Daniel advised his friend to forget about the trees. When the rains come, all the crops will have died by then, and Malawi will have a long famine season. Triwell told Chief Wen that when the president arrives, he must be informed of the outrage going on here. They can't continue to be silent about it. Annie's mother tells that 20 years ago there was already a famine in the country. The girl is upset that her university studies are in question, because there is no money to pay the tuition. Agnes promises her daughter that she will attend university. William and Gilbert continue to search the junkyard for broken accumulators and fix it. Later, William came to school and hinted to Mr. Kachagunda that he was aware of his affair with Annie. If the others found out, there would be a huge scandal. Kachigunda was forced to ask Mrs. Sicolo to grant the boy admission to the library. True this must be kept secret. William began to study books about dynamos in order to build a flashlight like the one on Mr. Kachigunda's bicycle. William wanted to learn how to harness the energy of nature for the benefit of people. Soon the president of Malawi paid them a visit. The people greeted him with great applause. When Chief Wem was given the floor, he told the whole truth about the food problem. According to Wem, the people needed a government that truly cared about the citizens. Of course the president didn't like that. Wem was taken away by guards, Gilbert was not allowed to his father. In spite of everything, Gilbert and William tried to break through to the chief. Panic and turmoil broke out among the people, and shots were heard. Wem was badly wounded, but it was too dangerous to take him to the hospital. Triwell told his son that these men could return at any moment. There is no help to be had. They must also gather all the crops they can. Obviously, there is enough corn to last five months at most. Agnes worries that their family won't make it through the year, they just won't have anything to eat. Soon Triwell learned that the government denied the food shortage. The people were outraged, and protests began to be staged. Despite his wife's entreaties to stay, Triwell decides to join the protesters. Annie realizes that she must take care of herself. William as always was spending time in the library. Mrs. Sicolo is interested in his invention. The boy tries to build a wind generator, but he needs Mr. Kachigunda's help. Meanwhile, Kachigunda suggests that Annie elope together and marry him. The girl does not like the idea, for by doing so she would dishonor her family. However, Kachigunda goes on to convince her that this is the only chance. There are no prospects here, the teachers have stopped being paid. One day the principal noticed that William was attending classes illegally. He expelled the boy from school without the right to study at any educational institution in the region. Mrs. Sicolo tried to put in a good word for William, who chose study over working in the fields. Soon it was announced that grain was being brought to the village to be sold. The people rejoiced, for it meant that the government had not abandoned them to their fate. Agnes gave her son money and told him to buy as much grain as he could. The protesters noticed the government trucks with grain and realized that there was no point in holding a rally. Meanwhile, Agnes suspects that her daughter is having a secret affair with one of the men. The mother cannot allow Annie to disgrace the family. Suddenly a robber broke into the house and threatened the women. He stole the last supplies of food, and Agnes wept in despair. People lined up in huge lines for grain. The military controlled the situation so there would be no unrest. When it was announced that there was not enough grain for everyone, people stormed the barn. Fortunately, William had time to buy some grain. To keep the hungry people from taking the supplies, William and the others waited for the crowd to leave. Agnes was angry at her husband, for if he had not left, they would not have been robbed. Meanwhile, the military told the people with the grain to get ready to flee after the door was opened. William escaped through a hole in the wall to remain undetected. In the evening at home, Triwell counted the money he had left. They would have to eat once a day to get through the year. Annie declared that she wasn't going to live like that. The mother slapped her in the face for her impertinence. But afterwards Agnes promised the daughter that she would not let her children starve, and she hugged her. Triwell plows dry land because he can't do anything else. The family is starving and dividing portions among themselves. Triwell announces that tomorrow they will start sowing the land, but some are convinced it is pointless. If it doesn't rain, it will all be for nothing. William tried to hide some food for their dog, but the father noticed this and forbade him to feed the pet. At night, William confesses to his sister that he knows about her affair with Kachigunda. The boy wants to fix the pump and provide water for all the fields in the village, but to do so he needs the parts that Mr. Kachigunda has. 
Annie is the only one who can convince him to give it. Annie fears the parents will find out her secret, so the next day she runs away with Kachigunda, leaving her parents a note. Annie did not want to be a burden on her family, so she decided to leave. The family asked the school principal for help. He said he would try to find out where Kachigunda is now, but he can't promise anything. In addition, the school is closing because there are almost no teachers left. William asked the principal for permission to go to the library. The boy doesn't give up the idea of building a device capable of turning wind into energy. The local guys despite skepticism, decided to help their friend. Finally William was able to do it. The radio began to run on the wind. The guys got very excited and decided to build a big wind turbine to provide water for all the fields. The chief was in a very serious condition. As Triwell was plowing dry land, the sun showed him his invention. William talked about his idea to build a large wind turbine for the pump, then the drought would be no problem for them. To carry out this plan however he needed parts that could be taken out of Triwell's bicycle. The man flatly refused, considering the plan a failure. In his opinion, the son should be plowing the land instead of doing silly things. The father also forbade his son to go to the library. All day long William had to work in the field in the blazing sun. There were no precursors of rain in the sky, so the drought would last a long time. William soon learned that the guys had decided to go north to look for work, because there was no other way. William convinced them to stay and help with the invention of the wind turbine. William went with the guys to the father to ask him to give them the bicycle. However, the man stuck to his opinion and chased the company away. The guys offer William to run north with them, but he can't leave his family behind. William gathered all the parts he had. At some point he noticed his dog with no signs of life. It happened due to hunger. The boy could not hold back tears. Triwell sat at the chief's bedside and later told his wife about the bicycle incident. Agnes believes that her husband acted wrongly when he refused the son's request. Agnes is disappointed in Triwell, who is unable to take care of his family. William buried his pet. The father later told him that he was thinking of growing tobacco, since there was no hope for crops. Triwell remains convinced that his son's dreams of a wind turbine are child's play. The son asked the father to believe in him and give him a chance to prove that his idea was feasible. Despite skepticism, Triwell decided to make concessions to him, for they desperately need water. From that moment on, work on the construction of the wind turbine began in earnest. William was helped by everyone who could, including Gilbert. Soon the wind turbine was ready for use. Everything worked perfectly, now the dry fields could be irrigated with water all day long. All the villagers were happy and thanked William for saving them. The people immediately began planting grain. Soon the harvest began to ripen. The chief passed away, and a funeral was held according to all local traditions. Now it was up to Gilbert to take his father's place and become chief. Despite the prospects that have opened up, William wants to stay here at least until his sister returns, but the father tells his son to go study and secure a better future. In the final shots, we see the boy climb the windmill to see his home village from above.